this week was really, in many respects, the culmination of, of I mean, it's, it's six years in the making, right? I mean, this was yes. not uh, you know, completely uh, foretold uh, at this time in 2016, but it was certainly predictable. Um, we certainly had the ability to, you know, that this was a, a, a real potential. I mean, in many respects, I would argue it has been this way for, you know, 20 some odd years, uh, maybe even in, in growing really maybe 50 years, uh, you know, uh, or maybe 45 in terms of like where we led with um, with Roe. But it, there was. I mean, it, you know, if we had stopped to think about this 20 years ago or 40 years ago. It is not surprising that the the Supreme Court that is going to overturn Roe v. Wade is also going to begin to unwind a lot of other things about our, you know, now 21st century, or I should say 22nd century, um, uh, uh, 21st century way of, of life, essentially. Oh, you know, I think, I mean, going back to what you said at first there, uh, it's been six years. I mean, I think we all remember the morning after the election of 2016, how we felt that horrifying, empty feeling of dread and horror at what was awaiting us. And this was a huge part of that. This this was I mean, we all knew that Donald Trump was a clown and, a, you know, completely inept and, and unqualified for the job of president. And we were shocked and stunned that this could happen in our country, that someone like him could become president. But the ramifications of it were always, at least for me and I think for an awful lot of people, what was going to happen with the court? We'd already seen what what Mitch McConnell was capable of before the election. And the only thing that was saving us at that point that was that we would have a Democratic president who would nominate, you know, I mean, we figured Mitch couldn't hold out for four years. So he'd have to have to replace that seat and then hopefully, you know, maybe more um, with with you know, more liberal justices. And when that didn't happen, I think we all just felt this complete, you know, sense that, as you say, the 45 or 50 years that we were that were leading up to this, that we had finally reached the sort of culmination of the rights uh, battle to dominate the court. But I have to say that even with that, the dread that I felt, the horror that I felt, this week kind of, you know, it, it was worse than I imagined, to be honest with you. I felt I felt that it was worse than I thought it was going to be. I had assumed that there would be at least still some desire on the part of these people to at, at least kind of cover their, you know, their 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 goals a little bit and that they would at least try and maintain some sense that of, of respectability and legitimacy uh, of the court. And it's clear now that they don't care. They, they don't care. And it's not just in the, in the way, in the, in the, the, the results that they've gotten, it's in the opinions themselves. They're basically just telling everybody, Hey, whatever, what are you going to do about it? You know? And, and I, I'm, I'm frankly pretty, pretty stunned, even though I was one of those people who took to my bed for a week after 2016, knowing that this was coming and understanding what we were going to probably be dealing with. Even even as someone like that, I have been this week, frankly, shocked that that uh, everything coming from the from the, the guns d decision to row, of course, which we knew. But even so, it, it was it's it's worse than I thought. Um, and then these these last two decisions and then uh, yesterday's uh, agreement to take up the case, the uh, independent state legislature's yeah. case next fall. I'm OK. All bets are off. The gloves are off. They're just going to do it. And, I, and and they're saying, what are you going to do about it? I, I think that's a good point about about Roe, because I think that had I, you know, I, I'm quite convinced that at the very least, um, you know, prior to the Texas case, I guess, um, I would have said they're going to chip away at it. They're just going to they're going to chip away at it. And it'll take it'll be a two or three year process in which they chip away at, at, at Roe v. Wade. And, and they'll have a, but, you, but you're right. This is I mean, on one level, like, you know, we've said for a while they are theocrats and they are. I mean, they are they are mm -hmm. zealots and they are theocrats. And 
Um, and I mean this literally. Um, and you don't really get humility that much with theocrats, right? I mean, right. you know, Roberts has always been a little bit cagey in the way that he unwinds these things. And uh, everyone else on that court is to the right of Roberts, at least in not necessarily an agenda, but in that sort of like there is a, a worldview and a disposition towards other human beings by fundamentalists, the religious fundamentalists and their fundamentalists, uh, you know, to the extent that like Brad Kavanaugh is not a fundamental. He's just a go along to get along type of guy um, they, they they just they have God on their side. And so they can't go wrong. Well, that's right. And in fact, one of the one of the best things that I saw on on Twitter this week in regards to what you're saying is that, uh, you know, there's all this talk about originalism and and how, you know, we have to go back and look at the, at the history and what the founders were thinking as they went to bed at night uh, when they were putting together the Constitution. And and one of the one of the some Twitter wags said, yeah, here's what the founders were thinking. Wait, you're telling me that the, the majority on the court are Catholic? I mean, right. it's kind of, you know, I mean, that was not an originalist kind of uh, kind of thought at the time. Not that there's anything wrong with Catholics being on the court. I'm not suggesting that. But it, it this is a very, very conservative Catholic majority, particularly the last justice that we just put on there. I mean, Amy Coney Barrett, I mean, she was literally part of kind of a kind of a, an extremist Catholic cult. <laughs> For, you know, I mean, this, and that's not an exaggeration and I'm not trying to insult her. It's just the truth. I mean, this is where she comes from. So you're right. A lot of this comes from this, you know, this very, very, you know, right wing fundamentalist theological position. And then you have this hardcore partisanship. That's clearly just, I mean, these and people like Clarence Thomas, who yesterday they, they quoted that he, he believes that the vaccines for COVID, COVID vaccines, or derived from, you know, aborted babies. I mean, this is a guy who's like on QAnon or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how far he is. And we know about his wife, of course, who is also part of the right wing, you know, the extremist faction. And, you know, the, 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 this is a really, really <laughs> very, very difficult and, and uh, you know, very thorny problem. And I, I guess, you know, here I am on your show again, you know, talking about what do we do? And again, I'm kind of running up against the sense that nobody's going to do anything. And well, and I, I oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's OK. I, I thought you were you were uh, down there. I didn't need to cut you off. But the, the, the point that you make about Clarence Thomas, him saying this QAnon stuff and this these not crazy conspiracy theories about aborted babies being in the vaccines, I mean, it, one, it's almost clarifying to people, hopefully, that they understand that these right wing justices and all Republicans are really in the same boat of crazies. And it's not just the MAGA or the whatever Biden's right. trying to call it, ultra MAGA. But at the same time, the fact that Biden has basically ruled out impeachment for Clarence Thomas as this case is going to be taken up, the one that you mentioned at the start, the North Carolina case uh, about elections for for, um, for federal office uh, and giving making a more politicized process and t and potentially taking the courts out of it. Um, that could be grounds. We should start impeachment proceedings now, given uh, the ties that Ginny Thomas has to these groups, because this could set the groundwork for something incredibly scary in 2024. 